we are going hands on and going to teach you everything you need to know about Sidecar and using your iPad as a second display in macOS Catalina. Welcome everyone, it is Andrew from Apple Insider. And with macOS Catalina, you can use your iPad as a second display, as long as it's running iOS 13 and meets some basic hardware requirements. For us, we simply went to the AirPlay menu and chose our iPad from the dropdown. That is literally all it took and we were connected in less than a second using our Mac, our MacBook Air 2018 with Mac OS 1015 Catalina and our iPad running iPad OS. Once connected, you'll see a monitor icon up there in the menu bar is that blue one and you have several different options to choose from to manage your external display. It can mirror or it can use as a separate display and you can hide the sidebar and hide the touch bar that are showing over on the iPad side. You can also disconnect completely or you can jump into the sidebar preferences. Inside of the sidebar preferences, you can move that sidebar to the left or right side. You move the touch bar to the bottom or to the top and you can enable double tapping on the Apple Pencil. While that doesn't seem like a whole lot, that's kind of the point. It is that easy to set up and get going using Sidebar and the latest versions of the OS's. Everything you see right now is running over a wired connection using USB-C, and the lag is extremely minimal. We have a pretty lightweight Mac here, so we really want to see how this would work as we push something with a little bit more graphical prowess, such as Affinity Photo and some fairly large files. While at the same time, we opened up Safari and loaded a few web pages to be running here in the background at the same time that we're editing our photos over here on our iPad. Looking closer at that iPad UI, you see not only the actual desktop and the application view, but we see the touch bar along the bottom. So even if you don't have a touch bar on your machine, such as our MacBook Air, we still have access to the touch bar, including opening up Siri, changing the volume, and customizing it how we see fit. We actually like the touch bar, even though a lot of the times it does get underutilized, so it's nice to see that it is here and then we can take advantage of it. We also have the sidebar, which has a few different button options for us to choose from. Along the top, you can move the dock over to the iPad side of things. There's command, option, shift, and other keys there. And at the bottom bottom, there's an undo button, as well as the option to disconnect and open up the keyboard. We can see so many different use cases for this. For one, you can just use it next to your Mac as a secondary display, perfect. But what was also really nice, we were able to leave our Mac plugged in over on our desk. We then took our iPad, took off the smart cover, smart keyboard, folio cover, and we sat down on the couch and had the display mirrored. Then we were able just to use our Mac touchscreen over on our lap in the living room. It was amazing how well that worked. Right now we're editing this image using the mouse over here on our actual Mac. But you can use things like the Apple Pencil so you don't have to have the Mac right there, right completely touching your iPad like we do in this demo. I really thought there'd be more delay and more lag, especially since right now when you're seeing this video, this is actually beta one of Mac OS Catalina and beta one of iPad OS. So there's definitely gonna be some bugs to kind of work out. For instance, we didn't see Sidecar appearing in our system preferences, but it did display in our AirPlay menu. So we still were able to connect even though there was still things kind of wonky going on. But we were able to edit this photo with pretty much no lag like it was native on our machine. Some of the more graphic intensive UI elements like switching between spaces here, you can see definitely some frame rate drops, but it was not bad at all. So we were wondering, what happens if we go wireless? We unplugged our USB-C cable, went back up to that AirPlay menu and attempted to connect again to our iPad Pro. And to our surprise, performance is still really excellent. There's still some lag, like a very small imperceptible amount of lag, but this is beta one and we really can't wait to see how Apple is going to polish this as it gets closer to the actual release. Especially as we're going wireless here, we did not expect this level of performance. It is so easy to connect this as a display and to throw our work up on it and just move between the two monitors like it's absolutely nothing. When you have a 12.9 inch iPad Pro, that thing is almost as big as our 13 inch MacBook Air. So it's like you have two of those side by side. You may want to use a different stand rather than the smart keyboard folio because it is kind of awkward because you have that keyboard in the way. So maybe if you use like the compass from 12 South, it'd be a little bit more compact on your desk. As I said, you can use this with the Apple Pencil. So we're able to use any application that can work with a stylus, will work with the Apple Pencil. So again, we jumped into Affinity Photo and loaded up a very high raw image for my Nikon Z7. And we were able to go in here and do some impainting and getting rid of some of these sun glares on this iguana skin. You can see by the time that it takes for that impaint brush to actually take effect that these aren't the best graphics in the world on this base MacBook Air, but 
in terms of actually rendering the UI and moving everything around, it felt very smooth and very easy to do. And we were really excited with how well this performance worked. So if you can't tell, we are stoked to see iOS 13, iPad OS, Mac OS Catalina all debut this fall. We are going to be huge users of this new sidecar feature coming to those platforms. Let us know down below in the comments what you think of Sidecar. Is this something that you're going to use or is it just a gimmick? We'd love to hear your thoughts or you can shout at me on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU. Hey everyone, did you guys like that video? Be sure to click on that like button so we can create content that we know that you guys want to see. And follow Apple Insider on all social media channels. If you want the best prices on any Apple gear, check out the Apple Insider price guide that is updated daily. And until next time, we'll see you later.